The story that you are about to hear is a compilation of tales showcasing different cultures or beliefs that is unique from our perspective. Please sit back and enjoy the tales I am about to tell you. In the 1970s, something strange haunted the people in the small town of Enfield, Illinois. On April 25, 1973, Henry McDaniel was among the first to encounter this terrible creature, the Enfield Monster. The reports were covered by the news media at the time, with some suggesting they may have been caused by a wild ape or an escaped kangaroo. On the night of April 25, 1973, at about 9.30 p.m., Henry McDaniel and his wife had returned home and were greeted by their two children, Lil and Henry. The kids proceeded to tell him a tale about how something had tried to get into the house by scratching on the door. Shortly thereafter, Henry was alerted to a peculiar scratching sound at his front door. He expected to see a dog or a cat, but what he met instead was far stranger. What Henry found to his terror was a creature that had three legs on it, a short body, two little short arms, and two pink eyes as big as flashlights. It stood four and a half feet tall and was grayish colored. He added later that it was almost like a human body, and it was trying to get into the house. Henry was completely mortified by the sight of this horrible apparition, slammed the door, and rushed to grab his 22 pistol and a flashlight. Henry proceeded to fire on the creature four times, and according to him, when I fired that first shot, I know I hit it. The beast hissed at him. Most sources say that it sounded rather like a wildcat, and proceeded to bound away in long leaps across the yard eventually becoming lost to McDaniel's side as it made its way towards the railroad and the cover of the trees. He insisted that he had seen the thing cover 50 feet in three lips. Stunned by the encounter, Henry proceeded to call the police. Upon investigation, the state troopers discovered a series of scratches in the siding of the house and footprints that were very similar to a dog's but having six toes instead of four. Two of the tracks were four inches wide, while the print left by the third foot was smaller. Many on the police force were skeptical about what McDaniel had seen, despite having just received news of an attack on a small boy just 30 minutes earlier. The creature had ripped at the child's clothes with the claws on its arms, while the talons on the toes had shredded the kid's shoes. However, the police couldn't find any trace of the entity so things cooled down for a moment. The boy, Greg Garrett, a 10-year-old neighbor of McDaniel, later told Western Illinois University researchers that his report was a hoax to tease Mr. M and have fun with an out-of-town newsman. However, on May 6th at 3 a.m., Henry encountered the creature again after having been roused from his sleep by the commotion from his neighbor's dogs. Once again, he saw the creature loitering about near the train tracks. This went on for several minutes until the entity casually bounced away into the night. Then, after word of the Enfield monster had gotten around, people began to flock to the small town in hopes of seeing the thing. Two days later, a day after McDaniel was interviewed on local radio, The local press reported that police were called to investigate reports of gunfire and arrested five young men from out of town who had come to Enfield in order to photograph the creature, carrying shotguns and rifles for protection. The White County Sheriff dismissed reports of this as a monster hunting expedition as an exaggeration, saying that the men were just out drinking and racing hell mentioning the monster only briefly during questioning. 
the men were charged with hunting violations. They were very enthusiastic, but they were also intrusive. This prompted the local sheriff, Roy Pochard Jr., to warn McDaniel about keeping his mouth closed or he would be forced to incarcerate him. Over the next few months, the crowds began to grow larger. With the larger crowds came increased alarm among the citizens of Enfield. Some among them were genuine monster hunters, while others were just hunters or thrill seekers with guns. This forced the sheriff's hand, particularly when he had to arrest five gun-toting hunters for shooting at a gray thing that ran through the woods. Two of those hunters, Mike Mogul and Roger Tappy, both from Elwood, Indiana, both swore that they had witnessed a gray monkey quickly move through the underbush. Sheriff Bouchard made numerous threats against Henry McDaniel, which it should be noted had no effect whatsoever. He was convinced that there was something very strange going on. Shortly thereafter, once the frenzy of hunters and tourists had died down, four more people saw the Enfield monster. Between 1941 and 1942, there was a string of similar sightings in the small village of Mount Vernon, which is ironically less than 40 miles away from Enfield. These encounters involve a mysterious leaping beast that terrorized the local people and is supposedly responsible for numerous animal deaths and mutilations in the region. The locals called the creature the Mount Vernon Monster and described it as being vaguely baboon-like in appearance and able to leap anywhere from 20 to 40 feet in a single bound. However, this creature is likened more to the devil monkey than the Enfield monster. But, it is a possibility that this was in fact the same creature. Used as a case study for a paper on social contagion in 1978, sociologists cite the episode as an example of collective behavior where a group or crowd can be affected by the spread of group emotions such as panics, hysterias, collective visions, and extreme instances of suggestibility. The researchers found there were no more than three first-hand reports that have subsequently been exaggerated by news stories and local gossip into an epidemic. Hey everyone, I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took the time to listen to my narration. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I am Twisted Mind and please enjoy the rest of your day. Salamat.